Okay guys, so last episode we're talking about the local police helping the racers find places to race. Let's pick up from where we left off. At the Pomona drag strip, there's a sign adjacent to the starting line that says Parker Avenue. And that is in honor of Chief Ralph Parker of the Pomona police. And he had a motorcycle sergeant that worked for him named Bud Coons. Bud actually was an associate member of the Pomona Choppers Car Club and also helped them not only draft their regulations and bylaws, but go out and look for a suitable place to race their cars. Initially, they actually tried to get the property that is Pomona Raceway today, and they were told no. I'm assuming it was the city council that shut them down. And so they kept looking, and they found Fontana Airport, probably 15 minutes down the road, and actually conducted races there for right about a year. I'm guessing their experience from running there and the credibility they got and the huge reduction in local street racing probably then enabled them to go back to Pomona. They were given approval to run on the Fairplex. In fact, the city leveled it, repaved it, and there was an understanding that all the proceeds from the track would go back to paying that loan off and then they'd run a deal once it was paid off, which it was in full. So. NHRA helped out with getting people facilities to race on, but they had yet to put on a single race yet. Well, that was all going to change. April 11th and 12th, 1953 is the first NHRA sanctioned event, and that took place at Pomona Raceway. It had already been running for just over a year at that point, but now NHRA was dipping its toe in the water and saying, okay, we're a sanctioning body, now we want to conduct a drag race. And that first race was won by the Bean Bandits out of San Diego. Carlos Ramirez was driving the car that day, although Joaquin Arnett and he alternated out. And that car pretty much dominated a lot of the Southern California action in 1953. So the Pomona race, I'm assuming it went really, really well because NHRA decided to conduct another one. And these races they were referring to as regional championships. So the second regional championship took place down at Paradise Mesa in San Diego, California. And what would happen with those races is they're given trophies out at the end of the day. Okay, for whatever reason, even though we all know elapsed time wins races, the big news back in that day was always top time, which actually meant mile per hour. So whoever ran the biggest mile an hour of the day was typically given a big trophy. But then what would happen is, let's say you had a D Roadster and there were four other D Roadsters in your class. And if you went through and defeated all of those, then you would get a trophy for class, but then you would go into top eliminator and typically you'd run off against the quickest rail, which most of those were gas. The D Roadsters, I, I believe all of them ran nitro back then. And then you would also typically see a motorcycle in there. There was a lot of guys running nitro and motorcycles back then. Twin engine bikes, Triumphs, Harleys, a lot of these going 140 miles an hour with a t-shirt and goggles. But a lot of times they'd walk away with top eliminator. So now NHRA's run Pomona, now they've run Paradise Mesa, and they decide we're gonna go for a third 1953 regional championship and they go up to Kingdon in Northern California. It's either Lodi or Stockton, and they run the third one up there. And I think it becomes obvious, looking back at this, what NHRA was doing is testing their formulas and seeing if this was a success and probably tweaking the programs along the way, and they never left California. And that was gonna change in 1954, and that was gonna change in a big way. And this gentleman, Bud Coons, that I mentioned, has now quit the Pomona Police Department, is employed full-time by the NHRA, and is gonna be a part of that historic, I don't wanna jump the gun, but when we get to 1954, we're gonna talk about the drag safari. So next episode, we're gonna cover some other real formative years for drag racing, and we're gonna specify NHRA. We haven't even got to AHRA yet, so really at this point, NHRA is the game in town. We're gonna go through the 54 drag safari, we're gonna talk about the 55 drag safari, and that culminates in a little race they had in Great Bend, Kansas, called the Nationals.